Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the Stone Mountain Lithonia Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, I welcome you to tonight's event, Mind Over Matters. I'm Stephanie Singleton, Second Vice President, and we are here tonight to help you put your mind over matters. Simply put, 2020 has been a year to never remember again, or a year where you want to say, okay, I've had enough, I've got to make some changes. Uh, COVID, political uncertainty, civil unrest, economic impacts, and everything in between to include laws has ravaged many of us this year. So tonight we want to take some time out to spend some time with a very, very, very loving, very good member of our chapter, Sora Jalen Peabody Smith, as she helps us with managing and overcoming the mental strains that this year has caused. So some housekeeping tips. We encourage you to pose your questions in the chat pane, or if you're on Facebook, post them in the questions pane there as well. We'll be a little bit chatty tonight, so periodically check the chat window for some additional tips, questions, and information to make you think a little bit more about the content that we're sharing. And finally, the most important part to a few of you, some lucky viewers are in for a very, very special treat. So you've got to pay attention throughout the entire night, but more on that a little bit later. So we hope you're ready for tonight. We hope you have your notepad. We hope you are ready to receive some amazing information tonight. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to the host for the evening, Ashley Hodges. Hi, everybody. Again, like Stephanie said, my name is Ashley Hodges. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I have the pleasure of sitting and um, introducing uh, Jalen Peabody Smith, who will give us a great overview of mental health, of mental health during a pandemic, and what we can do. Hi, everybody. Um, as okay. we, hi there. <laughs> what we all can do as we move forward um through this because we do know that we will move through this so Jaylen, um the floor is yours all right good evening everyone i'm so glad to um be back with my chapter uh it's just wonderful to be with you all and uh, share on this topic because this is a topic that i love that i i truly truly believe in right so just real quick, we're gonna talk about what exactly is mental health. We're gonna talk about some of the trends that we're seeing during this pandemic. Um, it is the holiday season. So we're gonna talk a little bit about holidays and, and grief. And we're gonna talk about self-compassion. I'm just gonna give you a little challenge about checking on your friends. Uh, so why is this discussion so important? The reality is, like Ashley said, 2020 was just not the best year ever. Um, I keep joking, you know, back in the day when your mama said, I'll slap you into next week or next year. It's like we would probably take her up on that offer right about now. I think we're just ready for it to be over, um, but it's not. So we're just going to talk about how we get to that blessing on the other side of the room. So, you know, when we talk about mental health, sometimes people feel like, mm, that's not me. I don't, I don't have an issue with that. But the reality is the um, World Health Organization puts it, uh, this is their definition of a state of well-being, right? Um, which we realize our own abilities can cope with normal stress of life. It can be productive and fruitful. That is our goal. But the reality is, all of us have those days, those seasons, or those moments when we don't feel like we know our abilities or we can make it through or that we can deal with stress or that we feel like even doing anything at all because the reality is we're human. So we all have some type of um, episode or interaction with our mental health not being the greatest sometimes, right? So again, it's our emotional, our psychosocial and social well-being, kind of how we feel and how we relate. It impacts how we think, feel, and act. So for example, um, if you're stressed out, right, and you come home and somebody gets on your nerves, you might snap. Um, it's because you're stressed out, right? So your mental health, even in that moment, has a lot to do with how we treat others and and how we feel. 
And uh, the number one is probably stress, right? It presents itself in how we deal with stress, how we relate to others and how we make choices. I often say that when we make bad choices, it's because we're in a bad place or it's coming from a bad spot. And so that's why it's important. But the reality is everyone experiences some type of mental health episode. I mean, if you're on Facebook or, you know, on chat, just raise your hand if you've ever been stressed, if you've ever been so tired that you don't even feel like getting out the bed, if you ever just had some grief, right, where you just, whether it's the death of a loved one or you missing that party that we used to get to go to or you lost a job or relationship, any of those things, you have dealt with a mental health issue at some point. And it's a spectrum. So what do I mean by that? It's like you can have be on the low end where you just have some anxiety and it doesn't really bother you too much, or it could be where it is just totally overwhelming you, right? Um, you could have depression where it's just something that's going on. Um, we call that contextual or it could be lasting a really long time. Everything in terms of mental health can be on um, a spectrum, right? So trends during the pandemic. Let me start with saying that emotions are contagious, right? So even if you never dealt with anxiety, 95% of the chance you have dealt with anxiety during this pandemic. And anxiety is um, the fear of the unknown because the unknown is scary. I often say that um, emotions are contagious. I remember when I finally took my daughter Maya just to go run to the store and it was her first time being out in like weeks. She has asthma, so I kind of protect her a little bit more. But just seeing everybody in the mask just caused her to be so anxious and feeling the um, anxiety of the world. So we have seen an increase in anxiety, right? Worried about finances, worried about, am I gonna have a job? Worried about someone I love is gonna get sick. Uh, and then depression. Then the reality is there's a lot to be sad about right now. Now I often say we're in the same storm, but it, everyone has a different boat. Some of us are doing really well in the pandemic, financially, um, socially, and some of us aren't. Some are doing great in the beginning, but then not so much later on. It just kind of depends. And then the stress of it all. I, you know, I'm a therapist, right? And a minister. So I try to be all carefree and non-stressful. Baby, doing virtual learning with three teenagers has stressed me out. Like, you know, if I hit the lottery or something, I'm blessing all the teachers. I don't know how you all do it. And it stresses me out because I can't tell whether they're like in class or there isn't a Zoom or I don't know what's going on um, while trying to work and, and, and do everything else. So, you know, it's stressful. We've seen a lot of stress. Relationship challenges. You know, if you are stuck in the house with somebody for the first time for weeks and months on end, or if you're with them and now you gotta be creative on how you have a date time or have family time, even the best of relationships, there can be some challenges. And now it's like people are um, forced to deal with whatever they've been trying to avoid. Sometimes I say that our our busyness is a way to not deal with the problems in our relationship. Well, the pandemic changes that. We've seen a huge increase in, in counseling. And good, bad, or indifferent, we've seen a lot of infidelity exposed, right? Um, so if you met that boo and you know he or she said, oh, I can't talk to you at night because I'm at work. Well, that month that they wasn't at work, that changed. And so a lot of that you know, was coming up. Now, let me preface it with saying, this is just the experience in my practice, kind of what I have seen in the people that I've been working and dealing with, right? Um, increased intake of alcohol, drugs, and food. Part of it is because it's easy access. 
for those of us who are new at um, working at home, now we got the refrigerator like right across, right? We can go out and go into the kitchen and eat whatever we want. Where before we might have waited to um, the evening to have a glass of wine, well, the wine is right there. And so we see an increase in intake of alcohol, drugs, and, and, and food. And a lot of it is because people are looking for ways to cope. And these are right there, easy access. Uh, increase in abuse. Because and I say that because um, if you are home with somebody who is abusive or even just controlling, that's because you're home more, that's going to increase. Because there's more stress, that's going to increase. I don't see many teenagers, but when I do, I see older ones, maybe um, juniors and seniors in high school, those are in college. And I had one young woman who was just so upset that school closed because she just did not want to be with her dad every day because he was so critical of her. And she had worked so hard um, to be able to manage that. And then the idea of being home with him just really uh, put her through a really hard time. Now, on a good note, somehow um, I do premarital counseling and weddings and I see more people getting engaged. I don't, I have no data as to why. I'm thinking they're like, well, we're gonna be locked up in the house. We might as well uh, get married. Or maybe the thought is that life is really short. So let's stop putting this off and let's just go ahead and do this thing. And we've seen a lot more pregnancies because why not, right? You're in the house anyway, great stress reliever, all that good stuff. What we don't see a lot of during the pandemic and what I really want to hit home with is this idea of grace. Grace for yourself, grace for your children, grace for the people around you. Um, most of us have never been through a pandemic. We've never had to have a job during a pandemic. We didn't have to raise children in a pandemic. Um, we have to move away from this idea that things are normal. They're not normal. There's nothing we can do to make it normal. Having structure and routine helps, but this life, this 2020 is not normal. And we got to give ourselves some grace. If you have perfection issues, let them go. Um, my daughter, I'm going to mention Maya a lot today, but Maya has always been an AB student, but she's just like her mama. She is very social. So virtual learning, she just hasn't been doing that well. And she actually had, don't tell her I told y'all this, but she had like a 42. And I was like, my baby's brilliant. How could that be? I called a whole team meeting, whatever, whatever. Um, and it was just that she wasn't comfortable talking or something, I don't know. But I was talking to her pediatrician about it. And she said, Jay, it's just eighth grade. Give her some grace. And I was like, it really is. It's just eighth grade. Um, and it's just a year. And prayerfully, next time this year won't look anything like this. So being able to give yourself, your children, some grace. Things aren't going to be perfect right now. And that's actually OK. Now, we also have this other thing, right? Well, it seems like not only was there a pandemic, it seemed like the world just exploded with police brutality, with um, racism issues. It's like. Anybody that was racist felt like this was the year but it was okay to tell people. I mean, just we went through a lot. Uh, by the way, that's Maya right there doing her, her protest. She wanted to protest. Um, and I was anxious about, do we go protest? It's a pandemic. What do we do? All of that. But the reality is these events increased our anger, our anxiety on a time that we really needed some hope these events kind of robbed us of that. It, it made it more, more difficult. We felt very helpless. We were limited in what we thought that we could do. Um, but we really had to find our voice. And whether we protested in the streets or on social media, protesting and speaking out was a great way to do it. But what I saw a lot of was a lot of anxiety. Every time I heard about a shooting on, you know, you get those notifications if something happened, I was picking up my phone, doing my, find my iPhone to see where my black sons were, making sure that they were safe. 
Uh, we were having to have discussions with our children that um, were difficult. How to deal with an encounter with a police officer. Um, well, what about uncle so-and-so? He's a police officer and having to explain that it's just like any other group or family. You might love everyone, but there might be a few that you don't like. But having these really difficult discussions during an already difficult time. Now, what I did see is a huge increase in African-Americans seeking counseling, good, bad, or indifferent. We've had this stigma around it, and so we didn't want to, um, you know, go to get therapy. But most of us as Black clinicians would tell you our caseload is full. It's because people have found a comfort in doing telehealth. Um, the anxiety and all of the racism was just too much. And we were getting tired of having to explain to um, our non-Black coworkers or people, you know, what they could do and, and all of that. We just needed a safe, sacred space. And it's becoming more acceptable with uh, people of influence like our celebrities. And if you watch This Is Us, uh, there was an episode where Randall was in therapy and after everything um, happened, he decided that he wanted to have a black therapist. And I love it because the therapist they picked was down to earth um, and just made it really comfortable. And so we have seen an increase in people coming to therapy. And so that's great. I say everybody, everybody, all of us um, need therapy. It's like you do your physicals, you get a check-in, same way with mental health. Sometimes you just gotta check in with somebody. Now we are approaching the holidays. Um, and I often say for many of us, it is the most difficult time of the year, right? So um, holidays are not always happy. Christmas is not always merry for everybody, right? Whether it is a relationship that ended, whether it's somebody that has died some time ago, or someone that has died due to COVID, um, the holidays, quite honestly, can kind of suck right about now. And so what do we do? Well, we got to understand that everybody grieves different. There is no wrong or right way to grieve. There is no um, time limit to stop grieving or to stop feeling. Everyone grieves different. My husband, um, his mom died in September. He was her primary caregiver. He is a mama's boy. And his way of grieving was staying busy. He just wanted to stay busy, right? Until he just didn't want to anymore. Um, I've been watching him because the holidays are, are hard. They're, they're, it's gonna be different. It is that constant reminder that somebody is missing. Someone that usually celebrates with us is not here. And that's hard. Social situations can be difficult. People um, will say, hey, well, right now it's not too much socializing because of this, but um, you know, family gatherings or wanting people to be together or even on the calls, it's gonna be hard for some people. I encourage people to cry, right? Because tears are not a problem. Um, tears are a sign of your worship. When you cry, um, there's a Jewish proverb that says it's cleansing to your soul. You're getting all of that out. Uh, many people say, if I cry, I'm worried that I won't stop. You will stop at some point. Um, the Bible says that God's counts are tears. And that's because tears mean something. Beloved, I would love for us to stop telling people when somebody dies to be strong. Being strong is overrated. It is not there, what is there to be strong about when someone you love dies? There's no weakness in that, in mourning or grieving. Uh, Jesus wept, right? Jesus cried when Lazarus died. Uh, so it is okay to cry. And you can do whatever you want with these holidays. You do have a choice. You can celebrate the way you always have and just have a plan B. You might decide you're going to do that same tradition and that morning decide, I wanna do something else. You might decide that you wanna just have a pity party. I'm all good with a pity party as long as it has an end time. And then you might decide that I just don't wanna do the holidays this year. And that's okay. Where somebody like I'm a Christmas junkie, I need the holidays, some may wanna pass. 
and that's okay. But if you are going to, um, remember that it's not always gonna be this way, right? That there is a blessing on the other side of through, it's just getting through that's hard. And even with grief, um, it's like any other wound, it's gonna heal, you'll have that constant reminder, it might just not hurt as much as it does now. And for many who have suffered a loss, this first year, this first holiday season is the hardest. So just don't quit do or don't. Do decide where you wanna spend the holidays, right? Again, COVID, we can't travel. So more so, um, am I gonna join that Zoom call or am I just not? Um, am I you know, gonna get together with family even though CDC says not to or am I not? You know, But decide ahead of time and be okay with your decision. Do say yes to help and ask for help and be okay with taking care of you which we're gonna talk about. So if you need your homegirl to tell people, hey, tell everybody stop calling me, or um, I'm just, I can't cook, I'm just not into it, have somebody send you a meal or bring you a meal, whatever you need. It is okay to ask for help. And what I have learned is that sometimes people being able to help you is healing for them. Make a list and check it twice because grief makes it harder for us to concentrate. Matter of fact, the pandemic as a whole has made it difficult for people to concentrate. I hear a lot of, I can't sleep, or my sleep is different, or I can't remember things. It happens a lot. Make a list, check it twice. Uh, do seek gratitude. Try to find, even in the darkest of times, one or two things that you are grateful for. And remember how we said emotions are contagious? Gratitude works the same way. The more you can think of small things to be grateful for, the healthier it becomes for your spirit. Um, don't do more than you want. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. And in a couple of moments, I'm going to tell you or teach you some different ways just to say no. And don't keep your feelings bottled up. Cry, um, talk to somebody, a pastor, a counselor, a friend, go out in the backyard and scream if you have to. Um, Going outside is healing in so many ways. Being in nature, journal, write, whatever you got to do to get those feelings out, right? Because feelings are going to have their way. They're either going to stay inside and turn to anxiety and depression, or you're going to be going off on the people that you love because those feelings just have to get out. Grief is like a wave, right? It goes kind of up and down. Uh, but if you go to the beach, if you try to stand in front of a wave, it's going to push you over. If you try to turn your back like it's not there, it's going to knock you over. Sometimes you just got to ride the wave a little bit. And if you do have fun, don't feel bad. Because I have a really good feeling that the loved one that you're missing wants you to enjoy yourself somehow this holiday season. And don't do anything that does not serve your soul or your loss. And again, we're going to talk about how to say no. One of the things that helps is just find new traditions. So real quick, I'm going to give you a few. Light a candle um, in your home of the memory of the person that you lost. Some people like to do the chair. Some people like to invite somebody who doesn't have anywhere to go. Uh, put together a memory stocking or a memory box where you can write down memories that you treasure or um, pictures from the past and just sit around and pick a time to, to read together. Most of the people that come in for grief counseling are coming because they believe that their family doesn't wanna hear about this anymore. But really talking about their loved one does a whole lot. Um, include one of your favorite dishes of your loved one that they like to cook. Make a donation to a charity that was important to that person and just do it in their name or do um, some random act of kindness that, you know, if they love to bake, bake something for somebody else. Um, pull out those old photo albums. This is what my family does and just cherish those memories. Um, have your loved one's favorite scent. My grandmother, her favorite scent was um, like the rose oil. And so I have that all over during the holidays and play your favorite one, your fav their favorite music, whatever it is. But these simple traditions um, really do help. So look, I wanna talk about 
self-care and compassion real quick. Self-care is taking care of yourself. But in order to do that, I need you to have some self-compassion for yourself. What does that mean? Mean it's okay to just stop and think for a minute about how hard this year has been. It's okay to think about how frustrated you are because there's some place that you wanted to go or someone that you wanted to see and you couldn't. And have some compassion for yourself. And that's what's gonna help us to take care of ourselves. So my phrase for this year is take care of you. So how do we do that? Give yourself the same kind of love that you give others. Think about how some of you love on other people. What would it be like if you gave that kind of love to yourself? Stop caring about what other people think. All right, so we, I have this idea, right? That there's this, what we, what people think we should do and what we really want to do. And every time we do what people think we should do, as opposed to what we want to do, we are giving our power to somebody else. Caring about what someone else thinks takes away your ability to be happy. It doesn't matter if somebody thinks you're not doing this virtual learning right, or you're not um, as smart as you think you are. You know the truth, right? Just because somebody doesn't value doesn't decrease your worth. It doesn't matter what someone else thinks. It's a matter what you believe about yourself. Should is a cuss word. I should do this. I challenge you for the next, for the remainder of the year, move away from the word should. Well, I should do this. Because who should are we talking about? Teach people how to treat you. Beloved, if you don't spend time taking care of yourself, you can't get angry when the people around you don't take care of you. And that's like a whole nother superwoman syndrome workshop. But we teach people how to treat us. So if we are running ourselves ragged, we're telling people it's okay for them to run us ragged. If um, we're saying yes when we wanna say no, we're telling people that what we want doesn't matter. Which leads into this one, don't cheat on you. So what do I mean by that? Every time you say yes to something that you don't really want to do, or every time you put someone else's feelings before yourself, you tell yourself that you don't matter. And think about if you continuously do that, you're cheating on yourself. You're telling yourself that you don't matter. Um, look, Jesus did not have to take care of everybody. When he wanted to go pray or go to sleep, he was like, deuces, I got something to do. When he was at the um, healing pool, all of those people needed help. He helped one. If Jesus don't got to heal and help everybody, beloved, either do you. Stop doing what doesn't feel good to you. After a while, that will increase your stress, your anxiety, your depression, your attitude, all of it and be willing to feel, kind of the same thing we talked about, being willing to cry. Have a good pity party. Even if you have to say 15 minutes a day, I'm gonna cry or I'm gonna cuss or I'm gonna scream and then I'm gonna move on. But allow your feelings to have their way. And like I said, just because, yeah, just like you have a physical checkup, have a mental health checkup too. And again, give yourself grace. Give yourself grace. Now I'm almost done. I wanna talk to you about no, the beauty of the no. These are just some things that you can say when you wanna say no, right? Say, no, thank you, but it sounds amazing. I'm really honored that you thought of me, but I just can't. Unfortunately, no, I'm gonna to have to pass on that. I wish I could, but it just doesn't work right now. I love this one. Y'all can blame it on me. I promised my husband, my kids, my pastor, my therapist, somebody, I wouldn't take on anything new right now. This is the one that I like to do because I am a people person. I, I love to help where I can. I'll say, I can't do that, but let me tell you what I can do, right? So I'm doing what feels good to me. You know that scripture that says, um, God wants a cheerful giver. 
that's not just about money. It's also about our actions. If you're doing something that doesn't bring you joy and people can feel it and it's making you miserable, don't do it. It's not only making you miserable, it's going to make the people around you miserable too, right? And just say no, no. Or like I say, no, beloved. So the key here is um, if you say, well, no, I don't think so because I got A, B, or C. Then the person's going to debate you. Y'all going to go back and forth. And sooner or later, you're going to get tired and be like, you know what? I'll just do it. Ask yourself this. If I do this, will I feel resentful? If your answer is yes, then you need to say no. And no is a complete sentence. So lastly, I just really want to encourage us to not only take care of ourselves, but take care and look out for our friends, right? Because your friends are not okay. Um, put your mask on first, take care of you, make sure you're good, but check on your friends too. Whether it's a text message, a phone call, um, a note in the mail, um, and don't say, are you okay? Because most of us are gonna say, yeah, I'm good, I'm fine. Say, what's today like for you? How's it going today? When's the last time you smiled? Give your friends the benefit of the doubt. What do I mean by that? Um, if you haven't heard from her, don't assume she's being funky or has an attitude. Give her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe there's something else that's going on that you need to um, consider. I always use the example of when I was getting my hair done after I, I gave birth to Maya and at six weeks to leave the house. And my mother called and said that she was choking and she was calling the ambulance and she hung up on me. So I threw the rollers out my hair, I ran down the light before you make the left to my subdivision turn red and I ran it. If you saw me, you'd have been like, oh, Reverend Dre crazy. She don't know how to drive. No one would have stopped to think, wow, something really might be wrong. We got to give each other the benefit of the doubt. Even our partners, y'all, before we go to that worst case scenario, give them the benefit of the doubt. And don't wait to be asked. Because most of us are still working on asking for help. So if you know that um, you're good at math and your homegirl's kid needs some uh, quick tutoring session, say, hey, I'm gonna hit, um, hit your kid up and I'm gonna do some tutoring with them. Or um, if you know that there's been a death in the family and they need something, think about what they might need. What would you need in that situation? But if you know that somebody's not okay and there's something that you can do, go ahead and do it. But provide a safe place, a non-judgmental space. Most time, people just need to talk and know that they're not crazy. But if somebody comes to you and you judge them or you tell them what you would do, then um, you kind of put them in a box. Just being there means more than anything. You know, when Job, like Job went through a whole lot, a whole lot, right, in the Bible. Um, and for seven days, his friends just sat there with him. Because there's just something about being with people that gives hope. And then have empathy, try to understand what someone is going through. And again, that grace. If you don't hear anything else from tonight, I really want you guys to be able to um, give each other some grace, give them teachers some grace, give yourself some grace, okay? And we're gonna share this later, but this is just some resources. There are so many resources out there right now. Um, National Alliance on Mental, Health, on Mental Illness gives you just so much. Therapy for Black Girls is a great website to use as a directory to find a woman of color. Uh, My Sacred Space is a nonprofit that I actually started by um, some Soros who are um, in, I think in, I think we were in mids up talking about getting access to care. And so there's a nonprofit that started and we will give financial assistance to those who are in need of counseling. And so does the Loveland Foundation. They do the same thing so that um, money's not an issue. This year, Georgia has an emotional support hotline. Um, and then United Way is 211, pick up the phone. No matter what your need is, they can connect you. And then that's my information. Um, so if you need a question, you can just shoot me an email and we can go from there. But again, we're gonna share these uh, resources so that you also have access to it. So 
So I'll just, that's it for me. Thank you so much, Jalen. I'm sure that everyone here has learned a lot. I know that I have learned a lot. Um, and so just want to thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us on this Thursday evening. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. Awesome. So we're definitely about to open up the chat for questions. So if anybody has any questions that they would like to ask Jaylen, now is your chance. Um, and while those questions are coming in, Stephanie, would you like to start off um, our activity? Sure thing, ma'am. So to our friends on Zoom and our friends on Facebook, as you're getting those questions into Jaylen, we have a nice surprise for you. We've had a donation of five $20 Amazon gift cards for this event, um, just to share a little love during this holiday season. So in order to receive that gift card, the first five people between Zoom and Facebook who can give me four of those self-compassion tips, you will be one of the winners for the gift card. So four of those self-compassion tips and go. So as we're waiting for those responses to come in, uh, we do have, I, I received a, a private message for Sora Jalen. Um, as someone who provides care to others, who takes care of the caregivers? How do you refill when you are empty and you still have to care for others? I love that question. I believe that all therapists have a good therapist. So I go to therapy. Um, I also am really grateful to have a partner that understands and sometimes can tell me when I'm a little off. And um, I am really big about having that Sabbath. So like Fridays are my day. I don't really work on Fridays. Um, even when the kids were little, if they had like a field trip and it was on a Friday, they know they were out of luck because mommy may not want to come, right? Because Friday was my time. I also, um, and I do whatever I want. I might veg out or whatever. What's been hard during this pandemic is travel because I love to travel. And um, I recognize about a week before Thanksgiving, I was just out of it. I was exhausted. I was, I, I, I had never woken up and said, I don't go to, I don't want to go to work. I love what I do. But I woke up one day and was like, I don't want to go to work. I don't want to do anything. And I stopped and I thought, and I said, I'm tired. And so I literally, I had clients scheduled and I never canceled. Um, but I told them I can't today because I'm not my best self. And if I'm not my best self, I can't give you what you need. And we, um, instead of having Thanksgiving in our home, we went on Airbnb, we found a little house on the lake and it was beautiful. And I don't think I just slept most of the time. Usually I know I need to take a trip every, I, you know, always tell couples, this is a sidebar, but couples, date night or time a week, full day a weekend, weekend a quarter, year, week a year, even if you stay home or you go someplace. And I've always done that. Not being able to do that for the, in the pandemic has been really difficult for me. So um, I'm now mindful, I gotta find a way, even if it's just to get outside um, and get a change of scenery. I even make the kids go on the back deck to do school sometimes. So yeah, good self-care and a therapist. Awesome, thank you so much, Jalen. I actually have um, a question for you. And my question is- What are you doing, Trey? Hey, Patty. <laughs> hey. <laughs> my question is um, for anybody who might be on the fence about therapy or might want to get, in, um, get therapy, but they are feeling some sort of stigma, what would you say to them? Just try it. Try, you can often, many therapists offer like a consultation. Um, just try it and see how it goes for you. 
when people could come to my office, I would have women come in and they literally would just be like, Whew, and just sit there for about 15 minutes and like have a cup of tea or something. Cause this is the only time that nobody can ask them to do anything or bother them or whatever. Um, the Bible says seek wise counsel. I tell people all the time, if you have diabetes or you have high blood pressure, you're going to do what you have to do outside of the office, but you're going to go to the doctor as well. And it's the same thing. Um, but I always just say, just try it. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. And connected to that, we just had a question come in um, that asked, I heard that therapy is intended to be a temporary thing and shouldn't be ongoing. Is that true? Or is it okay to see a therapist on an ongoing basis? It, it, so it's a twofold answer. Um, with premarital counseling, when I do premarital counseling, I expect my clients to come in every year or two around their anniversary just so that they can kind of check in. But the reality is it really depends on what you're coming in for. If you're coming in because everybody get on your nerves, you stressed out, you're not sure what the root of all these tears are, um, sometimes you just need you know, a series of a few weeks and you're good. You can always go back, but you're good. If you're dealing with um, trauma from childhood, especially physical or sexual abuse, that has really changed um, how you look at life. You know, I often share that I felt stupid and ugly growing up well into my 30s. And because I felt bad, I attracted people that treated me bad and I made a lot of bad choices. Um, going to therapy is the reason I became a therapist. Those type of things take a little bit longer because you're having to go back and rewrite a whole narrative. Um, what I tend to do with my clients is I will make, instead of saying every week or every other week, I'll spread it out a little bit, kind of like read them, um, but they're always welcome to check in. But I, I go by the client and when the client says I'm good, I'm great. So it, it, but it really depends on the issue and how much is impacting your life. Awesome, thank you so much for that, Jalen. Stephanie, do we have an update on our giveaway? Yes, ma'am, we do. So we actually received three winners from Zoom and two winners from Facebook. So on Zoom, we have Melissa Jones Clark, Aisha Nelson, Venetia, excuse me, Venetia Johnson, and on Facebook, Natira, and please excuse me if I mispronounce your name, it is not intentional. Natira Uzel and Tracy Hogan. So if the five of you, Melissa, Aisha, Venetia, Natira, and Tracy could please email me, I'm going to place the email address at which I'd like you to contact me in the chat so that you can receive your gift cards. Congratulations. And with that, I would like to take a moment to just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jalen. You are absolutely a jewel amongst jewels. Um, you have filled so many tonight on Zoom, on Facebook, and those who could not stay. Um, I have some who have mentioned that they are going to come back and watch this a little bit later. Um, but you are always such a great leader. You always give amazing counsel and amazing guidance. You are everything. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Soror. Thank you. You're about to make me cry. Don't cry. You're going to make me cry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Ashley Hodges, you rock. So you are an amazing member of my committee. You have dealt with my type A personality and executing this event flawlessly. You roll with the changes. You are dynamic. And Sora, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you so very much for making this event happen. You are so amazing. Thank you. Thank you. That is so sweet. Thank you so much for your leadership. Absolutely. And to our behind the scenes Sora, Sora Deborah McLeod, our technology chair, your support for the chapter has been integral in almost well, if everything we are doing currently because we are in this virtual space. So, so I thank you so much for all you do for the chapter, for your continued support to the technology needs of the chapter and for your diligent support on tonight's event. Sora, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sora McLeod. 
And finally, I would like to turn it over to our esteemed president, Sora Danette Battle, to provide her closing remarks. Thank you so much for that. And again, I agree with um, what Sora Singleton has just um, stated to you. Sora J. Lamb Peabody Smith has always been there for our chapter. I don't care how far she's traveled. Uh, she's always reached back or we, she's always left the door open for us. So for that, we truly, truly appreciate you as being a member. And as far as we're concerned, you never left Stone Mountain. So, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. And to Sarah Hodges and Sarah Stephanie Singleton, thank you so much. Because again, it takes a, 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 a lot of effort to pull together or an event like this. And this is serious, Soros. Our mental health means so much. I know we always focus a lot on our physical state of being, but our physical health is, is detrimental to a lot of times to our physical health. So that's why we need to make sure we protect our mental health. I know um, from a personal perspective, I know my, my, uh, my daughter is, uh, is a counselor. So I always say she used us to experiment um, while she was going through her program and getting her license. Um, but one of the things she always noted too, she said when we're speaking with people is that we just don't know how to say no sometimes. We're so, we want to be so liked by everybody all the time that we forget about ourselves and we give so much of ourselves. And then when we realize it's not reciprocated, then that's when the problems come in and all the upheaval about my self-worth, my self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So if we haven't learned anything tonight, it's that definitely let's put boundaries around what we can and cannot do. Definitely do that, especially during this holiday season. But the one thing I can all say about the pandemic, it makes you have to stay a certain, that we don't have this, we can't travel around and do all that like we used to. So one good thing did come out of this is made us sit down and stop and think about our own mental well-being. But again, I, I, and I know it's so much going on, the holidays coming up and uh, we're still in this epidemic. But again, let us focus on ourselves and we can't do anything else first. And we hear it all the time, like the airlines, put the mask on you first. So again, thanks to all of you. Thanks to all our guests, our members and other Soros. I'm looking online, I see Soros, uh, uh, the president from the um, uh, um, Sharon Owens, is um, Douglas Carroll Paulding, I, I believe she's still on. So I thank all the Soros for joining in because again, this is a serious matter. So, and we need to take it to heart. Soros guests, have a great evening. Have a wonderful holiday season. And as always, don't forget to vote. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you, Madam President. And I echo that sentiment. If you are not registered or if you have not verified your, your voter registration status, please do that tonight. Thank you very much for your attendance and good night. Good night.